Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Nativity Small Group Podcast. Hey everyone, I am Kelly and I'm with Shanna. Hello. Now, you may or may not know Shanna. If you've watched some of our SGU or Small Group University podcasts, Shanna has been a guest on there. But Shanna is the person who does all of the wonderful, beautiful things with videos at Nativity. And I'm simplifying it greatly. <laughs> She's an amazing producer, director, editor. And so all of the beautiful media that you see each and every weekend coming from Nativity is Partly because of Shanna. I feel like I'm on the wrong side of the camera today, but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> and we're glad to have her too, especially this week. I think this has been a really fabulous week because we're talking about raising expectations. I actually wanted to have this week to talk to you all about it because this message, I think more so than any, speaks to me. So when you think of expectations, Shanna, what does it mean tonight in the message Father Michael talked about holy expectations? What what does holy expectation mean to you? I love I love that holy expectations. It just brings it a little stronger and a little deeper meaning because I feel like I'm in a season of life where I have expectations for myself again. I, you know, raising two kids, two I have two teen boys. One's in college and one's in high school. And it's like, they're usually the focus of all my expectations. Mm -hmm. And now that they're older, I'm starting to have these expectations of myself and my career and things like that. And it feels a little different. So mm -hmm. I'm, I struggle a little bit sometimes with that. So when you, you think about the struggles that you're having, put it into the context of holy expectations. So Father Michael was talking about how holy expectation is not living according to what we want, but according to what God wants for us. And part of that holy expectation is kind of knowing that regardless of what happens, God is working okay. everything for our good. And I think when you're talking about your your season of life right now, right, with your kids, um, we were talking actually about how hard it is to have holy expectations when it comes to our kids more so than anything else. I agree. I feel like the holy expectation thing helps me with my kids because now we talked we talked about both of our boys and how it's at, at their age now it's like you don't want to run in and fix it for them you want them to you you want to raise your expectations of them to be able to work it out and raise your expectations of God that he's got it for them and for us and for all of our good mm -hmm. and I feel like knowing that God has a big huge main role in that helps me just sort of take a deep breath and hand that to him. I think it's weird, though, too, for me personally, because when it comes to my uh, my professional career and, you know, my extended family and most any other part of my life, I, I feel pretty good about the idea that I do live with a holy expectation. I've gotten to a point now through my faith and my life experience that I just know whatever happens, we'll work it out. It'll, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's like my new mantra. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. It'll be fine. Um, but when it comes to your children, it feels completely different because you feel somewhat responsible, actually a lot responsible <laughs> for what happens and what they do. And so talk about, cause you've experienced this with your, your children too, how, you know, we can put out expectations and we can raise them, but it's really out of our control. It is out of our control and we can sit and we can worry, but that doesn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. So having that holy expectation and sort of getting outside of ourselves and the fact that we don't really have the power to fix everything, even though we try and we think we do and we want that power, um, it, it is in his timing. Right. Um, but we talked about that, too. When I say his timing, it makes me think of a conversation we had a couple of weeks ago about how when things don't happen when we want them to. I think mm -hmm. Kelly and I are both sort of career driven women. And, yeah. And we want things to go our way when when we want them to. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always work that way. And and for me, I'm trying to take a pause in that and say, there's something I need to learn here. There's something. I need to humble myself or there's something that I need to learn or rate, you know, raise my expectation of myself or someone else mm -hmm. or just it, mm -hmm. 
it's like a learning tunnel to go through to navigate. You're much healthier than me. I usually just try to figure out who's holding me back (laughs) and not, not what I need to do. It's like, what do you need to do? But I love that, that, you know, sometimes God's timing, which is always perfect, uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't al- feel perfect. It doesn't always. feel perfect and it doesn't align with ours. But I think when it comes to expectations too, it's knowing that the expectations that we have of God, um, I love what Father Michael said, that that God, God doesn't want us to lower our expectations because he wants more for us than what we could ever expect. Mm-hmm. And so when we lower our expectations, we're really kind of saying, eh, God probably may not do it. And so it's really not that big of a deal, but that's exactly the opposite of what he wants us to do. And I think our gospel today with Habakkuk really is so beautiful. Let's take a look at a couple of verses here. Uh, First of all, so this was the complaint from Habakkuk. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abound. And then this was God's answer. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. This is my favorite part. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks to the end, and it will not prove false. Lo, it linger. Lo, it take a while, though I'm going to do it in my time, not your human time. I'm going to do it in God's time. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. I think what stood out to me the most here was the story of Habakkuk. And like Father Michael said, if, if you haven't read that uh, gospel, do, by all means do so. It'll take you 30 minutes. And I guess we got into it so deeply because we used it for the vision campaign back um, in 2014 through 2017. And so just as a staff, we got to know Habakkuk. And one of the things I love about this, this gospel is that he shares how important it is to wait, to wait on God's timing. And and I think that that's the hardest thing for a control freak like myself um, to to wait for things because I think that I'm smart enough, I'm wise enough that my timing should be the right timing. And then when things don't happen, it just disappoints me and it sets off that little control freak. I know. So what do you do when you're waiting? Right. Well, I think that's the lesson today, right, is to find your rampart, to find your place where where is your rampart i asked father michael and i put him on the spot and i he wouldn't tell me i like to sit outside you know this i just like to pause for me as a mom as a working mom there's just so many distractions are my to-do list is never done i know yours is the same and we go 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 and I, i like to just my rampart is just sitting outside in nature and just removing all the barriers in my head Mm Hmm. i think i've actually found it I found it during the summer, especially by water. Whenever I'm near mm-hmm. water, water seems to be what speaks to my soul and helps me um, heal. I think, too, though, uh, there's silence gets a bad rap. Mm-hmm. I love sitting in silence. I love when it's just peaceful and I can hear the natural sounds around me. And so my rampart is getting to a point where I can begin to silence my mind, silence my thoughts. And I love, too, what Father Michael said about, you know, when you are in your rampart and you are allowing yourself to hear God, see God move, but more so that you expect him to do that. I love that. Right? You expect him to do that. And when you expect him to do that and you put yourself into a position, he will do that. And that is my struggle when I don't hear him mm-hmm. is when I'm just moving too fast. I'm going too fast and I'm working on my to-do list and my expectations for me and my day. Exactly. But sitting, sitting in that quiet is when I can hear exactly maybe some answers. Exactly. So today in your groups, I'm hoping that you can talk a little bit more about holy expectation, what that means to you, and 
Talk about where is your rampart? Where is that place that you go so that you can hear God's voice and see his vision for your life? Remember that we have a tool to help you this week too. Just text the word ROOT to 88877 and you can get that PDF to help you help define your vision and the vision that God has for you as well. So let's come together and pray and then I'll send you into your groups. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Father God, thank you for wanting more for us, for teaching us that you want to give us more than we can ever imagine. And thank you for giving us your word that we can begin to slow down, that we can find the time and the moments that allow us to connect to your vision, to align to your vision and your will, align our will to your will, align our actions to your actions. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Well, we hope our conversation starts your conversation. Have a great week. Thanks so much for participating in small groups. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. You can be a part of our mission to love God, love others, and make disciples by sharing this video. We are grateful that you're part of this community.